Hey there, it's Victor with Infinite Hope and Quantum Joker uh, reviewing uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. General impressions on the film. Uh, what did everybody think of it? It's been a, a short while since I've seen it, but uh, from what I remember of it, uh, The Nightmare Before Christmas uh, had – well, it, it, it um, was a, a brilliant achievement in terms of, uh, well, stop motion um, and those sorts of techniques – uh, it contained many, uh, well, dark, a, a good deal of dark imagery, and yet uh, it also had whimsical elements to it. It has a mature slant to it in the form of, uh, well, this this romance between Jack Skellington, uh, Sally, the identity conflict endured by Jack, fun musical numbers, and the uh, end of of a festive and and horror feel uh, to the movie would render it um, entertaining for, for all audiences, uh, well, parents, families, and people on their own. I was uh, surprised when I rewatched it on how short of a movie it was, because when I first <laughs> watched it, it felt longer, uh, but and I didn't care for it the first time I watched it, but when I rewatched it, I liked it a lot more, uh, maybe because I'm more mature now and I think I understand the darker elements that I missed before and the music was uh, fantastic you know and, and as uh, Quantum said the uh, the work that must have gone into this is just uh, amazing when you think about how long it took I also have a fond connection with the characters because I play the Kingdom Hearts series and you encounter Jack skeleton in that role-playing game so i have Good. kind of an additional connection to them in that way uh but uh, apart from that the movie is is really something that um i don't know if younger kids would really uh enjoy it but uh, i know i didn't when i was younger and i watched it so but when i watched it again being older now uh, i did enjoy it more yeah, that was one of the funny things about that movie is that um, I, when it came out, I remember my parents didn't let me see it because it was full of um, so much, so much disturbing imagery. One thing that um, I, I, I still freaks me out when I watch it now, even though it's not 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 so much of an impact, is uh, the the kid, the the Halloween Town kid with his eyes sh sewn shut. You know what? That might have just been a little too dark. <laughs> that was my thought when I was looking at that. But yeah, in general, this film is uh, pretty excellent. It was, I think it was short simply because so much effort had gone into every little bit of that. And so much work had to go into it that um, they, they couldn't really stretch it out. It does allow for a very um, coherent plot, really. Mm -hmm. And um, and yes, the the music, which I guess we'll go into more, is pretty good. Well, it's pretty great, actually. Uh, I guess to start back on the music, um, my my uh, thought is just that pretty much every piece here is memorable, um, and I am not even sure we have the strongest assemblage of voices for this, but uh, but yeah, uh, I forget his name. The guy who who does all these songs for um, Tim Burton, I can never remember his name. He I mean, uh, Elfman. Yeah, Dan oh yeah, Danny Elfman. He did the singing for Jack, and that was pretty awesome. Uh, Oogie, Bo Oogie Boogie, Criminy. That's a hard name for me to say. Um, he he's a big name in in like uh, in theater. Uh, he did uh, he did Cats. He he did the voice, I believe, of Audrey Two in uh, in uh, Little Shop of Horrors. That was um, you know I was very impressed by by all their singing and all the song numbers. Well, my my favorite song would uh, would have to be "This Is Halloween." That's a Halloween standard for me. Yeah. Oh, um, it's also worth noting that, um, well, uh, Victor, you uh, you outlined uh, some of the more perhaps some of the more affronting uh, imagery uh, in the Nightmare Before Christmas, um, but uh, for the most part. Um, this well, Halloween Town, the the well, the the primary setting of the film, um, it is populated by um, well, by well, gruesome creatures from uh, from mythology, say say well, uh, embodiments of very scary concepts, 
but um, save for the odd mad scientist here and there, um, the community is uh, closely knit, uh, very respectful, um, and well, I, I suppose every single character, save for uh, I suppose uh, those um, those bratty kids who kidnap Santa Claus, um, every single character is um, ultimately a, a, a decent person. Um, as such, you, you could think of uh, the Nightmare Before Christmas as uh, well distilling the very m purpose of Halloween today. Say Halloween is is essentially a a day through which we can take fear um, and just have fun with it, and that is precisely what Tim Burton, or well, precisely what um, uh, what the production team did in with Nightmare Before Christmas. Yeah, it kind of had that um, Adams Family uh, Munsters yes. appeal to it in that in that yeah they they have a different way of approaching things, a different value system in some respects, but they're still decent characters, and uh, mm -hmm. I did like that. Oh, one one thought when you were pointing out the uh, distilling the, the the concept of Halloween is I really think it would have been funny if if somehow um, Christmas and Halloween could have met on on the concept of candy. Because that seems to be the two things they have in common. That, that and Easter, I guess. I want to kind of get into talking about the characters, though. Uh, especially Jack, because there's so much, uh, there's so much to cover there. Um, Jack, I think, starts out as, you know, he is the leader of this community. And the community expects a certain behavior from him. And when he discovers Santa Claus and Christmas Town, he changes completely. He uh, is in love with Christmas and is awakened to this joy that he never had before. And he wants desperately to share it with everybody else, but they expect something completely different. And you, you see the change in him backstage. He says, well give them what they want and this is kind of a giving in that a weakness on his part to give in to the social pressures i'm not sure it's strictly social pressure i guess it's it, he's not really trying to conform his own ideas he's just trying to sell it i guess maybe maybe that would be yeah i guess that's more my thought he, he's trying to sell it to the people and in so doing he makes it something what was new for him becomes familiar for them, and uh, I don't I don't know uh, exactly how to interpret that or whether whether moral can be gleaned from that. So you don't you don't think he was just giving in to them because I mean he does he does seem like he was just kind of giving in to their uh, the crowd's demands of you know, more of the same. No, if anything, it was more um it was more selfish for him. I mean just just his his desire to see his vision of Halloween. He himself still is stuck in some respects to um to the Halloween concepts. He he ha he gets some of it, but he still ends up making he still ends up approving a very ghoulish Halloween just because that's or a uh, ghoulish Christmas because that's how he ends up seeing it as a as a good Christmas. I I just kind of had the my impression was that he didn't want that, but he kind of got pressured into it to the point where he believed that he wanted that at, at the end, and where Sally is trying to be his uh, moral compass and say, you know, that's you know, this is going to turn out really bad. Jack's vision of uh, uh, well, of of bringing Hall of Christmas to Halloween Town, um, it does go all awry as uh, well uh, as you recounted, but. Um, I, I can uh, still, um, as, as you uh, demonstrated, um, the Infinite Hope, uh, I still can see, um, I suppose, uh, an, a, a moral of individuality in, in um, Jack's uh, ambition, in his striving for, for something different in his life. Um, even, even though he proves unsuccessful, uh, the film, I suppose, does uh, it, it does encourage what, uh, you to find your own purpose in life. 